All right, everyone. We've got a new series here we're trying today at Blue Glow Electronics, and we're going to title this series Soapbox Sunday. And I think you'll figure out as we go into it a little further why I might call it Soapbox Sunday. But you know, in the past, I've done some videos on just random things. You know, what have I, what have I been up to? Maybe what do I have in the pipeline? Just an update on things. So this is not straying far from that concept, um, but I'm going to add a little more to it. Maybe answer some questions you guys have sent me along the way. Maybe show you some uh, some other projects that I normally wouldn't show you in this. Maybe talk a little bit more about some of my other hobbies and things we've got going on. Who knows? Just a random collection of things or maybe the, uh, the current stream of consciousness I have going on in my head. Uh, dumped down into a video. Probably post these on Sundays. I'm not. I'm not saying every Sunday. Just uh, sometime on Sundays. Um, but hopefully we're going to have some fun with these, and hopefully you'll have fun and enjoy them as well. I will say this ser video series may not be for everyone, and if it's not, and you see me post a soapbox Sunday video, just you know, simply skip over it and don't watch it. It's it's fine. All right. Without uh, any further delay, let's dive into soapbox Sunday. All right, it is uh, messages that I get like this that, at the end of the day, keep me doing this stuff. And I, I get a lot of thank you emails, don't get me wrong. But this guy basically said, you know what, I took it on my own to go out here and try to calibrate my TV7. I bought a set of your calibration uh, tubes. I watched your videos kind of over and over again. And I thought for sure I was going to have to send this thing off to get it professionally calibrated. But in the end, I pulled it off thanks to you guys that is why i do this stuff is i want to i want to enable you to be a diyer to be able to pull things off on your own look there will be things that are over your head there are things that are over my head and when we run into those we find somebody that knows more than we do and we get our, get help for them but i'm just trying to raise everybody's level so that they don't have to go get an expert as often as they used to have to so um I just want to say thanks to the person that sent me this and, and all the other people that send me thank you videos. They um, they mean a lot to me and they keep me going. So uh, I just want to thank you for thanking me, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I thought I'd talk a few minutes about what is my audience. And this is something I've put a lot of thought into on my long drives to and work as of late. Um, the reason being is I've had a few people comment at times that say, you know, Mark, um, your videos are too simple for me. I'm looking looking for something more in depth. And at other times I get comments from people saying, wow, I was following you, but then I got a little lost when you went when you went here, you know. And I, and so I've been trying to say, well, what the heck is my focus, and who who am I making videos for? Okay. So I've came to the conclusion that, uh, and, and this is just what it's going to be, I am not making videos for somebody that has a four-year degree in electrical engineering and they're looking to up their game to the next level. I'm not making video for somebody that has been restoring audio gear for the last 10 years and they're looking for new tips and tricks. Um, I am making videos for the average person that's fairly smart and intelligent Maybe they don't have a formal background in, in electrical engineering or math or physics or anything. Or maybe they do, but it's been a long time. And they're just trying to fix some of their own stuff at home. Um, or they're interested in getting into the hobby of maybe being able to do some basic restorations. Um, that is my audience. Um, so if, if at the end of the day my videos aren't technical enough for you, don't go into enough depth, uh, I'm sorry, it's just not going to be my audience. There's some, some guys out there that get a little more technical than I do. I'm just trying to keep it at a basic layman terms that people can understand and do themselves and parts they can order online by themselves without having to spend you know hours of figuring out math and components and design and whatever. I'm just trying to keep it at a level that, uh, that, that the average person could do. So... Hopefully that's okay with you, but um, if not, then my channel may not be for you. And, I, and you know, sometimes I'll make a video and I'll get like, I'll get like, you know, the little thumbs up, thumbs down thing they do. I'll get like 200 thumbs up and I'll have like four thumbs down. And I'm sitting here going, 
what was what was it that made those four people give me a thumbs down? And ultimately, I never really know, but maybe this is some of it. Maybe I didn't go deep enough into the math or physics behind it, um, things of that nature. So anyway, that's what my audience is. I'm sticking to it. Hope you like it. Okay, there's a question I get a lot, and unfortunately, it's not as easy to answer as I would like it to be. You know, I mentioned a minute ago, do I go deep enough in my videos? This is one of those topics where it w it's, I really struggle with being able to cover this topic. And let me walk you through what I'm talking about. I get questions all the time like, hey, Mark, I understand this amplifier. I kind of get, you know, things like grid stop resistors. And I kind of understand here what, a, you know, a cathode resistor does. But if I wanted to just go pick a tube out of the, uh, you know, the uh, tube manual or CA tube manual, and I wanted to design a circuit around it, how do I go about picking all these resistor values? Or, hey, if I want to change this 3K resistor to a 10K resistor, what will it do to this circuit? Could you show me the easy formula for that? There's not one, okay? It's an entire design process called circuit design. Um, that honestly, it's a full semester in college if you go through an electrical engineering degree program. And there's semesters leading up to that. And there's uh, tangential uh, math and physics classes that lead up to that. It's not a simple formula. It is an entire design methodology and process that you have to go through. And honestly, I think it would be above most of my audience's head um, honestly, I don't do it day to day, so I would have to sit down and, I mean, I get it enough to um, adapt things. As far as designing circuits from scratch, I don't do that every day. I'd have to go back to some of my books and manuals to do that with. Um, it is a pretty intense um, set of steps that you go through to do that. And it's probably more than I can answer in a simple question or here's a simple formula for it. So maybe at some point... I'll do have a whole series leading up to and through the design of an amplifier. Um, a matter of fact, I've got a uh, I've got somebody reaching out to me right now, wanting to uh, me to come teach a class on some some tube stuff for two days, and I think I might take them up on that offer. Um, or maybe down the road, I'll I'll offer some classes here at uh, at the house if I ever get my building finished up. That's one of the goals there is to have a have enough room I can hold a classroom or at least a, some meeting space or whatnot. But um, it's just probably not something you're going to get the short, quick, simple answer for. And the reason you've been searching online, the reason you haven't found it in YouTube videos anywhere else, it is not a simple two-minute topic. It is a, it's an entire uh, semester in college and, and even if I did an abbreviated version of it it's a whole series of videos it's not a, a simple little process so sorry about that I'll try to get you as close as I can but I don't think we're gonna get there uh, uh, with the level that my channels at. kind of coming back around to my previous thing around my audience it's just a tough topic to uh, to tell someone how to how to design an amplifier like this from top to bottom and how to choose all the values and uh, and all the capacitor values and uh, feedback values. That's uh, it gets pretty deep, believe it or not. Um, you know, it's kind of like the difference between I can go down to Lowe's and buy some pipes and uh, some glue, and I can fix some plumbing here in my house. But if you called me up and said, "Hey, Mark, we need you to design the plumbing system for this 12-story building," I'm not I'm not the right guy for that. I need to go through some education and engineering behind plumbing and fluid dynamics and whatnot. And um, there's probably not a simple formula that tells you how to do that. So uh, it's a similar story. By the way, Lucy wanted to tell everybody good morning. Say, hey, Lucy. Say, hey. Yeah, you scared of the camera too. All right. Choke me or resist me. Mm. Um, <laughs> this one's all about the video I made on uh, what a choke does in a power supply. And I got some feedback from some people saying, hey, the video really didn't tell me much. It, it showed what a choke did, but it didn't tell me what a choke is and kind of behind the scenes, the math behind it and whatnot. And you know what? Back to my audience. I don't know if I'm going to go there. Uh, maybe I will, but, but you know, my intent in this video was to just kind of display, show you on an oscilloscope, the, uh, the effect that a uh, choke plays 
or gives in a power supply. And, but I did get a really good question from a couple people, and they asked the question of basically, hey, you mentioned you could do a CRC circuit where you used a resistor or a CLC circuit um, where you use an inductor. And um, if you could do both of those, why wouldn't you choose to use the cheaper resistor path versus this big, heavy, clunky, expensive inductor? Well, there is a reason. Um, the inductor will do a much better job at it. A resistor, when you put a capacitor in parallel with a circuit and then a resistor in series, that forms what's called a low-pass filter. And it does a good, pretty good job of filtering out um, things. The capacitor is an active component of that, and the resistor is a non-active component in that, kind of a passive component. Um, but when you actually um, put a capacitor and an inductor in that scenario, you have two active components. Um, there, you're dealing with the inductor, you're dealing with something called reactants, and there's some complex mathematical formulas behind all that that I'm not going to go into, but just trust me, the choke does a much better job at smoothing out and filtering um, the power supply. The capacitor itself um, kind of keeps voltage from changing, right? That's the job it, it performs. An inductor likes to keep current from changing. So it does a much better job than just a purely resistive load. I hope that kind of makes sense to you. If not, maybe I'll get into something deeper at some other point in time. But I did want to explain that a choke did do a much better job than a capacitor in this scenario. All right, the 2018 Shelby Ham Fest. Um, it was an amazing Ham Fest for me. Even though year after year I've been going every year since the early 80s and I noticed it gets smaller and smaller, I guess just eBay and people selling things in other venues, um, the, the Ham Fest has gotten smaller over the years. But this one still turned out to be a great one for me from an audio standpoint. First and foremost, I got to meet some of my viewers. I ran into uh, probably a half a dozen or more of my viewers that uh, kind of called me out and uh, ran into a lot of my old friends and uh, just got to talk to a lot of people. So that was, uh, that was probably the highlight of the whole show. And then there was the audio picking and it was amazing this year. I, quick, I picked up quite a few um, stereos, amplifiers, and a lot of tubes. Matter of fact, uh, I filled my Subaru up with tubes twice. Um, and you know, a lot of them were just big lots that I bought as people were unloading their cars. You know, I'd say, how much do you want for your tubes? And they would be like, oh, I don't know, a couple dollars a piece. And I'd say, how about $40 for the box? That's always my throw out offer for a big box of tubes. Uh, I think it's a fair offer because they, be, they might be totally junk or they may be worth a gold mine. And usually I get countered with 50 and I usually take it. Um, and I, I did that. I probably bought about eight big boxes this year like that. But there were a couple lots that were pretty special to me this year. First and foremost, um, I was driving by and, and I saw this guy and I bought a lot of tubes from him in the past. And uh, he always brings a lot of tubes. And I, I walked up to him and he said, hey, man, come here. I got something for you. And he brought me out this box out of his RV uh, that he had not even put out for anyone else. And it was this little small box right here. And if you'll notice inside of it, there are 60 Kenrad 12AX7s. These are amazing tubes. Um, they are as scarce as hen teeth. Um, so the Kenrad 12AX7s were some of the earliest AX7s ever made. These are war tubes made, in, made during the 1940s um, at the uh, Kenrad Kentucky plant. And they were, um, you know, they're just really special. So anyway, any rate, I've been sorting those, making some uh, sets out of them. I've thrown a couple up on eBay, and I've thrown some away in my stash, and uh, just having a lot of fun uh, testing and uh, putting sets together out of those. And um, then up next, I found this guy, and he had a big trailer full of stuff, and I, I wrote up, and I said, hey, uh, have you got any vacuum tubes? And he said, yeah, there's a couple boxes in here. And um, he said, but it's going to be a while till I get to them. They're pretty deep into the trailer. And he had about a 16-foot covered trailer that he was unloading just a little bit at a time. And so I kept driving by, back by, and finally he came out with a box of tubes and I walked up to him and I said, hey, um, I'm interested in those tubes. How much do you want for them? And he said, how about a dollar a piece or uh, $2 for the dollars for the small ones, $2 for the big ones. And I said, how about 40 for the box? And he said, how about 50? Just as I <laughs> anticipated. And I walked away with the whole box. I did not know what was in there at all. It could have been just a bunch of junk pulls um, but I, I was rolling the dice, and uh, sometimes you got to roll the dice and get them quickly over sitting there picking through them, and then next thing you know, you got three people picking through them with you. Um, so I then said to him, do you have any other tubes? And he said, 
He said, yeah, I've got some more in here, but they're further back. You have to check back later. So I kept riding around doing other stuff. And I checked back by about every 10 or 15 minutes. Well, I checked back by at some point and um, he was setting out a box of tubes and there was a guy standing there that started going through them before I got to him. And um, so I jumped in there with the guy and we were both kind of sorting through this box of tubes. And um, we both started pulling out new old stock Western electric tubes in the boxes. Um, so, or some of them were in the boxes, some of them were not. And um, he pulled out a few more than I did. Um, I just happened to be on the wrong end of the, bo on the bo wrong end of the box. At um, any rate, I, um, we went through that box and then the guy finally brought out the third box and we kind of went through it. And um, so I left and you know me and, him, me and the guy talked some. Um, he's from uh, Virginia. And you know he got quite a few good tubes. I got some good tubes. We were both happy about it. Um, but then I always, all weekend, I was wondering uh, what's in that other box of tubes because the uh, the guy that was bringing this stuff out told us that, that this guy was a uh, a uh, Bell, Bell Southwestern electric engineer. And so I, I just kept wondering. Well, finally I got home, got to go through these things, and here you can see these are all the Western electric tubes that I pulled out. Um, a couple of these did not come out of that lot though. Uh, a couple of these came out of another um, lot that I found on Saturday, uh, riding around with a guy named Brian Harrison. And uh, a guy yelled out to Brian, hey, I've got some antique audio stuff. Brian and I walked over there and they, um, the guy pulled out a couple boxes of tubes and I got to go through them really early and there were a couple of Western electric tubes in there. So. Just really good tube, uh, tube run all the way around. And uh, so I don't, I don't have pictures of all of them, but I just thought I'd show you these two special lots. It was, it was a really great, great time and I got to talk to a lot of people and uh, we talked audio and uh, I love doing that. So it was a great weekend. All right, I haven't even opened the box on this thing or pulled this thing out yet, but I had this guy contact me that had seen one of my Western Electric videos online and he basically said, hey man, um, I've got this Western Electric amplifier that I picked up somewhere. I don't know anything about it, and um, I'm interested in selling it. He basically picked it up in an estate auction. And the more I dug into it um, and looked at the pictures he sent me, I came to realize it is a Western Electric 124 amplifier, but it is not on a Western Electric chassis. It has all the components. It has all the tubes, all the, uh, the power transformer, the output transformer, the right choke. Um, it has all the right components. It's just mounted on some other chassis. So um, the guy went back and did some research. It turns out, I think, that this may have came from an old Western Electric engineer that had brought home parts and uh, kind of put, put together um, his own amplifier. So anyway, any rate, I'm going to try to bring this thing back to life. So you're going to see a video on this at some point coming up in the future. All right, up next. Um... Got a new little side project going on. There again, my ADD kicking in. Um, I have been struggling all the while. I absolutely love my HP 8903B um, audio analyzer. It does a great on the bench. I can really quickly hit buttons and tell distortion, power output, things of that nature. So I am not taking it off of my bench, okay? Um, however, what I've really struggled with is the computer interface going to that it's the GBIC interface and, um, and then it connects over to some steep some peat millet software on my PC and that software is getting really really old at this point the the, uh, the communication between that and the device every time Windows doesn't like when I did a Windows 10 update it took me three weeks to get my audio analyzer back up and working and running um, effectively the drivers just kind of quirky and whatnot so I've been looking for a better solution for doing things like frequency sweeps, uh, measuring noise levels, doing things visually, producing graphs that I can hand back to a client uh, once I restore an amplifier or build one or, or uh, restore a uh, receiver or stereo or something. So anyway, I found out about this uh, Quantasolum QA 4000 or 401 from a friend of mine um, over at SeaTech. Uh, um, and I, um, I saw what he was using. I checked it out on his lap, laptop one day and I thought that's pretty darn cool. So I broke down this past week and I ordered one of these things and it showed up today. I haven't gotten around to hooking it up, but uh, has some pretty good software. There's a whole DIY thread that's about 200 pages long at this point on this device. A lot of the headphone amplifier guys are using this thing because it does some really low 
low noise measurements and whatnot. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to make a video, probably more than one video. I'm going to make a video series on this unit. And hopefully it'll, uh, you know, turn out to be a great uh, addition to the bench up here. So stay tuned. I'm excited about it. And uh, you remember we were trying to use that analog discovery too for similar functions. And then the guy uh, at um, uh, Make that was making the software um, kind of went away. And so the whole project died. Uh, hopefully this one won't die. And, and at $449, dollars it's, it's a little pricey, but it's not insane. Um, you know, the average person could probably get into this audio analyzer um, under 500 bucks with some connectors and whatnot. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, my intent is to um, check it out, uh, do my reviews, figure out how to best use it on the bench, and then uh, share that with you guys so that um, if you want a, um, one of these on your audio bench, you could uh, follow suit. So stay tuned on that. All right, up next, um, plagiarism, the greatest form of flattery. Um, the reason I'm saying that, yes, I stole my um, Soapbox Sunday idea from somewhere else. Kind of. I mean, I've been doing some of these update videos. I just didn't have a name for them, and I didn't do them regularly. But, um, you know, I watch Brad, the guitarolog guitarologist, a lot. And um, he has this thing he calls Shit Post Friday. And he seems to do one about every Friday, and I find them hilarious. Uh, it's ramblings, kind of like what I've been doing today, except for he's he's a whole lot funnier than I am. Um, but um, yeah, so I stole his stuff. Hey y'all, it's Shit Post Friday. Hello, Phillies and fellers. Brad the Guitologist here, and it's time for Shit Post Friday. Okay, first up. So if you get a chance, check out Brad. He's a he's a great guy, and uh, I love watching his stuff. Um, but I give a shout out to a guy named, uh, I think his name is Lance. Yeah, Lance. Uh, he made this shirt for me a while back. I restored a Fisher 400 for me, and he does custom shirts, and he made me a, a Fisher shirt. I absolutely love it. Um, so thanks for that. And um, I'm going to call that a wrap. I'm trying to keep these things 30 minutes or under. Seems to be a good time frame for somebody to sit down and watch one of these or maybe pick it up over a couple pieces of time. And um, hope I co hope I get to make one of these every couple of weeks. I'm gonna have fun with it. I call it Soapbox Sunday because every once in a while I may just climb up on my soapbox and uh, tell you what I really think. But um, outside of that, I'll keep bringing you little tidbits of knowledge and info and uh, share some of some of the other stuff we got going on around here. Give me some feedback. What do you think on this series? Uh, tell, you can give me one of these or you can give me a bunch of these. Either way, I'm gonna keep making them. Thanks everybody.